Brother, brother, once again, I've been provoked to preach the coming of Christ. In order to provoke readiness and sobriety among the saints of God, my aim is to provoke a current state, a continual state of readiness among the saints, and the shunning of any delay concerning that readiness. Now, as you read at the beginning, it says, little while. That denotes a very short amount of time. And, so, and you'll see in the way the men live, it's questionable. How much time do men think they have in the world? As stated many times before, men generally don't think in terms of little when it comes to the time they have here. That's not, a, that's not like common. I have a little time left. Men like to plan ahead in their lives. They'll plan careers. They'll plan retirements. They'll, they'll plan future, other kinds of future events and goals. They're thinking into the future. Even little children on occasion may make the error saying, when I grow up. When are you going to make it that far is the question. Men who are people who participate in like annual or yearly events, you know, like when they're looking forward to the next one, they'll say, we'll see you next year. Well, that assumes there's a next year. And so I'm, I'm cer certain many of you have heard the expression, which is used often as a means to comfort someone. They'll say, well, t tomorrow's another day, or there's always tomorrow. Well, even this saying doesn't provoke the kind of thinking that's wrote in our patches, because that assumes there is, in fact, a tomorrow to look forward to. It's almost genuinely assumed that man always has a lot of time left. No thought even is even given to death, really. Like anyone will acknowledge they're going to die someday, but rarely anyone will say that, think that they is today. No one expects that to happen. It's never today. Even people in much older years will expect to live for prolonged amounts of time. Like no one expects an accident, well it's an accident, but no one expects like accidental death. I'm not walking out of the street expecting a car to hit me. I'm not like expecting some devastating accident to take place and take my life at work. I'm not expecting that. Just about everyone goes to sleep assuming they're going to wake up in the morning. But even though some of us prayed when we were little children, if I die before I wake, yeah. well, that's, <laughs> that's something to be taken seriously. You could die before you wake. You want to be clean. Because men feel they have a lot of time left, there's this tendency to delay things that are of importance. Mm -hmm. Like perhaps you've heard the expression, we have all the time in the world. <laughs> well, that brings the question, how much time does the world have left? You've heard the expression, waiting till the last minute. Well, when's the last minute in this case? Does anyone know when that last minute of the earth is? Mm -hmm. It could be any minute. It could be this minute. Yeah. So what, how much time do you really have to use here? Even when men do acknowledge that the coming of Christ is soon, often they will still speak of it in a future setting, like in months or weeks. It's never today. Some may rely on signs to confirm his coming is near, like the conversion of Israel, for example. I'm not against people looking for that. But I'm not sure it's wise to use an event as, like, your incentive to, like, get ready. Yeah. Like, that's your indication. It is going to happen. We know God said it's going to happen. But if it's happening right now, how would you know? That's how you have to think. So even though there are signs that it's coming, don't rely on certain events taking place to be, like, your, <laughs> your indication that, okay, now, now it's going to happen. You have to be ready at all times. Amen. My point is that the coming of Christ is almost never thought to be today. Someday, but no one ever says Christ is coming today. Don't ever like really say that. I know some people believe. I know brethren believe this because I've heard it said here. Could be today, and that should be in the mind fresh every day. Could be today. That's what you wake up with. That's good. Right. Could be today. Could be tonight. Could be before we're done here. I hope it is. That's that's like the anticipation. But you see, our main passage quite easily leads to the conclusion that this could be the case. It could be that soon. Yes. And according to this main text, men can't afford to assume they have a lot of time left before the Son of God returns. They can't assume that. What error did the, foolish, the five foolish virgins make? They thought they had enough. They did. We have plenty. And people have that attitude during time. We have plenty of time. Plenty of time. And their assumption of that led to them slacking off and not getting the things they needed when they should have. When men assume they have another day, they usually don't make effort to be ready today. Yeah. Brethren, the time is to be ready now. As the scriptures say, this is in Romans 13, verse 11, it says, Now is the day of salvation. Oh, actually, it says, Now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Now. 
And it's in 2 Corinthians 6, 2 that reads this one I just about read. It says, now is the day of salvation. Now. So you see, the scriptures don't lead us to believe that the coming of Christ is far off in the distance. Regardless of how long ago it was written, did Jesus not himself say, I come quickly? Quick. Now what about the word quick leads one to assume that the day of Christ is set far into the future? Like when you say quick, when you just hear the word quick, do you think a turtle? You hear quick, you think something fast. Like a blur on the screen, quick, fast. Snap of the finger, twinkle of an eye. That's what I think when I hear quick. It's coming rapidly, not at a slow speed. Did James not say in his letter, the, Lord, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Even in his time he spoke this way. Did Peter not speak about looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God? Now what about draws nigh? Draw nigh means very close. And the word haste is used there, and haste means swiftness in motion or urgent need for quick action. Now what about these kind of words would lead you to think that there's a lot of time left? They don't. And even though these things were written centuries ago, long times ago, even almost 2,000 years ago, even though these, pe these people still believed that the coming of the Lord was right upon them. Why do you think they were able to do that? Because a date wasn't given. There was no certain date. And there was nothing said that gave them the impression that it was a far way off. Like you hear, I come quickly. Any generation hears that thinks it's right on the, sh it's right on the horizon. Or it's, it's nigh. Or it's close. Or in a little while, in the sense of our main text. A little while. You don't think far ahead when you hear speech like that. And I think it's that way in turn. That every generation will be ready when they hear these kind of words. And we all know that the date is... All we know about the date is that it's quick and that it's soon. Now, even though many generations have passed since these words are written, that doesn't make the coming of Christ any less quick. Life in general, that is an entire lifespan. In this world, it's called a vapor. It just comes and it goes. It's a moment, mere seconds, when contrasted with eternity. When you compare the age of the earth to eternity, it doesn't look so old anymore. You remember old Methuselah? Well, his life was a vapor, according to the scriptures. Or you think old Adam, nine, over 900, 900 plus years old. Vapor. Just came and went. How much more your life, which is far shorter in comparison. Man, you didn't even make a century. That's unheard of. Someone's 100 years old. How it would sound to Methuselah, I'm, I'm 80 years old, <laughs> you're nothing, you know. Well, his life was a vapor, and how much more your life? And think of it this way. If one life is a vapor, and like a vapor, you think like a temporary mist, it just comes, you see, and it's just, it's gone. Just in a moment. Every life that passes is just many vapors back to back. You think like Donald's just, that's just like how fast it's going. It just comes and it goes. That's how fast your years go by. So you don't want to let the time that's passed fool you. The Lord's still coming very quickly. Amen. We should not let the time that has already passed fool us to think that we have many years ahead of us. My point in bringing this up is, even if, if you live your whole life, you still don't have a lot of time. It's still short. Amen. So if your life in general, just from, if you die a natural death, let go out the whole course, is short, how much more short if the Lord come quickly any minute yeah. during that short amount of time that's short already? It's even more short. So how should we think about the Lord coming in a little while? Like, what should that provoke in the saints of the here? It's in a little while. It's very soon. Well, how, just how it should in any situation when time is short. You don't have time. When you don't have a lot of time to get a certain thing done, you speed up. Don't you? There's like this urgency, spiritual urgency, you're like kind of kicking the gear. I need to hurry up. You become more aggressive. You're zealous in your effort because you want to get that thing done in time. You want to get to that place on time when you know there's not... And I'll tell you, the environment we live in doesn't provoke this kind of a spirit because people live like there's a lot of time left. How many times have you, you know, been in a car in a hurry to go somewhere and you're hitting all red lights? And on top of that, everyone's driving 10 miles under the speed limit. It'll slow you down. And they'll think, well, I'll just slow down. No, get around it. Or how many times have you been running to get somewhere and everyone else is walking? Sometimes an environment can promote slowness, laziness, delay. But don't let the slothfulness of others slow you down. Amen. If everyone else is slacking, you just pick up the slack and just go and keep going. We don't let others sidetrack you from your primary focus, which is God. If I'm busy and hard at work on something, something comes up, sometimes you just have to say, I don't have time for that right now. Mm, yeah. I, I can't. I can't give my attention to that. I want to get, I got to get this thing done. I can't afford to be delayed on this thing. Well, that's how it is with us in the spirit. 
when worldly temptations and cares come up, that should be your response. Don't have time. Don't have time for that. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. I can't afford to be caught off guard. Amen. This should make us all the more zealous in our labors to help our brethren be ready for the coming of Christ because you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. This has provoked me to be a lot more provoked in my, sorry, productive in my own <laughs> preaching. So, like, do I really want to waste the little time that I have? No. Like, what do you want to do with that? You don't have much to work with. So, you, you, you've you heard the statement, we've talked about here, like, getting a lot done with a little time. Mm -hmm. Be productive as you can. Well, you know what? We're told to do this in our labors for the God. We can get a lot done with a little time. Yeah. You don't have to waste it on things that are of no significance. The Lord can help us with this. I mean, see, it's his work we're doing. He'll help us with this. So I ask the Lord, will make you productive. Make us all productive. You'll be faithful to help us in this if we determine to do it. Amen. Be productive. Now I'll conclude this particular part with this thought on just readiness in general. There's a particular expression that I've heard said to those that are already in Christ that I find, in my judgment, not the right message for them on this particular subject. And it might seem very small, but it's this expression that says, we need to get ready for the coming of the Lord. Now, I don't really care for the get ready part, because get ready means you're not currently ready. Yeah. Get ready means you need to take time and prepare. Now, it's not that such a word's never necessary. At some point, all of us did have to get ready. There was that point. It's initial. And maybe someone's living in sin, don't have their act together. That's when that would come in. Yeah. Get ready. But, that be, but in view of our main passage, seeing that you are in Christ, seeing you do, this isn't, you don't really have a lot of time to get ready. You don't. In the scripture, the admonition to those in Christ is be ready. That is, right now. Because time is so short and could end any time, you would think that having to get ready would be something that the children of God would have to avoid or should avoid. For example, if I were to say I need to get the house ready for company, that means the house is currently a mess and I need to clean it up before company arrives. However, if the house were already clean, I would already be ready. And all I would need to do is prevent the house from getting messy. That way, at any time when someone comes, they see a clean house. Well, we don't want to let the house get messy, so to speak. Yeah. Or let's think of it this way. If I need to get ready for work, it means I'm not currently in the right attire and I need to get a uniform on. However, if I was to be ready for work, it means I'm in uniform and ready to go on the call, so to speak. I can come immediately. Well, we don't want to let ourselves get into a position where we need to get ready for the Lord. Rather, keep yourselves pure, flee useful lusts, live by faith, do what's pleasing to God, so that you might remain in a continual state of readiness. Amen. It's the way the Lord can come at any time and see you clean and blameless. Amen. Found of him, blameless, as the scripture says. Amen. You can, to use a more scriptural parallel, I could go back to the parable of the ten virgins. Five of them took oil with them, five of them didn't. Uh -huh. And when the night time came, they slept, and five of them, their lamps burnt out. Uh -huh. It's like, give us your oil. We don't have any. We said, well, there might not be enough for us. You're going to have to just go buy some more. Mm -hmm. Go buy some more. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> That's kind of the attitude there. Let's see, there, right there, there's a demonstration of having to get ready and being ready. Yeah. Uh -huh. be, to, if I were to say, we need to get ready, that would be like me saying, you don't have extra oil. You need to go buy some oil. I'm sorry. With a little while to go, that's, that's, that shouldn't be what you need to be told right now. Rather, I would say, be ready. It means like, all right. You have that extra oil already. Get ready to trim those lamps, so to speak. That's that's what I was looking at. Now, like I said, initially we get ready, but the remain we have to stay ready for the remainder of our time here. What I mean to say, just for the sake of not being misunderstood, is we don't go from being ready to needing to get ready. We get ready, and then we stay ready. That's what I wanted to get across. Now, on top of that, the scriptures don't even tell God's people get ready. It doesn't say that. I looked it up. It doesn't say that. It says. Be ready. Like it says, be ready to give every man an answer. Now, how much different would it be like, get ready to give an answer? Go home and study out what they're going to say. See, <laughs> be ready. Be instant, as the scripture says. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready on the go. And I say this because now is, like the scripture says, now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year. Now. It's said quite precisely. So rather than the admonished, or, 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 be ready now. Not after service, not before you eat your dinner, not before you go to bed, not after you wake up in the morning. Now, you're not guaranteed to last this entire service today. I mean, I trust everyone believes that. You're not. 
So with that, with that being said, I say be ready now. Amen. Keep yourselves in that constant state of readiness so you're confident that the Lord will receive you when he comes at any time. With all this talk and this need to get ready, perhaps the phone won't ask, well, get ready for what? You know, like, what are we getting ready for? Perhaps if we talk about what's coming, that will give us, that will give us more wisdom on being ready. Sure, we can easily repeatedly say, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, but what happens when he comes? What are we looking forward to? Let's talk about it. I will speak under the assumption that these things that I'm speaking of, they're being done here, so I'm not going to, like, say, you need to start doing this, you need to start doing that, I'm going to ask you to continue in these things. We can start with the world ending. Peter affirms in his letter, this is 2 Peter 3, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So the earth, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. See, that's one of those things that's going to happen in a little while. In a little while, the earth shall be burned up. The world as we know it is going to end. So that being the case, we are constantly ready to leave it. When you see the destruction of the world is near, it comes all the more rational to cling on to it. And seeing that everything in the world is corrupt and that it's going to perish forever, what's going to happen to those who cling on to it? I mean, if I could use an example, if I hold a stick, you may not hurt me much, but you set that stick on fire, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> you don't want to wait till things light up, they'll start letting go. <laughs> You'll perish with it. Amen. Now's the time to let go because it's not going to be around much longer anyway. In fact, that's more incentive to flee. If I had, if the house is starting to burn, I'm not going to wait till it's completely consumed in flames before I start to leave. I'm going to leave before it gets that far. Now, just as you're ready to leave, you're also ready to enter in. Also, as the Lord Jesus said in His parable concerning the talents, that enter into the joy of thy Lord. It's a transition. When the world ends, we will have a new heavens and a new earth to inhabit. By separating myself from this world, I'm becoming more fit for the one to come. Amen. And I want to stay fit for the new heavens and the new earth that are coming and live with its coming in mind. And might I add, with, seeing with, when you look at that, those things, little while sounds all the more sweeter. You know, even people like in the media world, they'll, they'll announce a movie or something coming out. You know, it's 2014 right now. It's like, we're making a movie for this. They're making this movie in 2016. You know, that doesn't, 2016, like, why'd you even bring it up? I'm not even going to be thinking about that next month. See, like, why don't you, why don't you bring it up when it's actually coming out, you know? <laughs> you see, well, this isn't how the Lord's coming is. It's like, I'm going to be, imagine the Lord saying that. He's like, I'll be coming in 50 years. Well, I know it's a lot. some of us are older. We'd be disappointed to hear that. I know I'd be. 80 years old, I have to wait that long? We'll see. That's, that, the Lord has spoken in a way where we don't have to think this way. We don't have to think. It's so far off, so far away. It's in a little while. Now, if you do, in fact, belong to these things, the coming of Christ with little to, in a little while, that brings great joy. You, tell, you can tell who's ready by the reaction to the verse, I suppose. Like, if someone is prepared, then the reaction is going to be one of gladness. Like, oh, good. But if they say, you know, if they're unprepared, then it's like, in a little while, he's telling you, like, it's going to be a feeling of grief and dread. I'm like, oh, no. Already? <laughs> I don't have any time left. And that's how people react if they're not ready or if they're not longing for it. Stay ready to depart and enter in. Well, how about the day of judgment? That's something that's happening in a little while. Men will all give an account to the Lord and be rewarded for all their works in a little while. Here's what the scriptures say on that. Starting in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 13, it says, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to his works. In a little while this will take place. Matthew 12 36 to 37, the, wor the words of Christ our Lord, he says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's happened in a little, you're going to be given an account in a little while. It's not far away before you have to give that. So it's time to start thinking about what my account is going to be. Yeah. And even Paul said in his letter to Timothy, he says that Christ will judge the quick and the dead. Yeah. He's going to judge. Amen. It happened in a little while. Now, seeing that every word you say is going to be accounted for and that you're going to be judged according to every work, what manner of persons ought ye to be, as the scriptures say? 
Do you ever want to be in a state where you will stand before the Lord, the judge, and, and then be pronounced guilty? Even if you have a court date here, don't you make some arrangement to be innocent? Don't you make, like, if you're charged with a ticket or charged with a fine, don't people make, there's, there's ways you can avoid the fine, so to speak. <laughs> But I don't. But this is the. This would be the worst of the worst to be pronounced guilty on the day of judgment. No speeding tickets gonna. That's not gonna par up to that. This will be eternal consequence. When every work is judged, would you find it wise to delay repentance from any sin that you have knowingly committed? Do you have that kind of time? Seeing that the Lord will judge according to works, does it seem rational to work in a lazy and a half-hearted manner like the slothful servant? He knew he was coming back. He knew he had reward coming with him, and he just sloughed off. How many people, when tempted to enter into some sinful practice and or entertain some sinful thought, think to themselves, hey, Jesus is going to come back when I'm doing that? Well, they don't. That's why they do it. <laughs> they think that it'll be past that point. I'll make up for it later, some of them say. Uh, you know, sorry, I've heard that in the world, actually. It's like, I, I'll, we'll make up for it later. I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you back later. I'll pay you back later. Like, well, there's, there's none of this kind of thinking in the scriptures with the day of judgment soon approaching possibly today now's the time to be pure in the eyes of god it is the time to be giving the lord your best labors Amen. It is the time to be shunning sinful practice and it's time to be ready so that you can have boldness in the day of judgment which is talked about in scripture you pray that you would have boldness in the day of judgment if you're giving an account soon don't stray away from the lord don't abandon the work because you're gonna have to talk about that you want to be found faithful and also think of it this way if you are ready, you look forward to the day of judgment. And then trust you do look forward to it. It's on, it's, you know, judgment in general is like a thing of dread. People don't look forward to this. But the day of judgment is a very pleasant thing for the saints of God. Amen. Well, like Jesus said, he said, if you confess me, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. Well, I look forward to that, don't you? I look that that's going to take place on the day of judgment. You're going to be confessed by Christ to God on the day of judgment. Amen. That's when you have an opportunity. If you are in standing right stand, you can say, he's like, I, I ceased from that activity. I did do what was right there. That's a, that's a joyous thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know your life's not in right standing, then well, you'll have a quite different attitude. At least I hope you would. But I look forward to this happening in a little while. And of course, we could keep going and going on things that we ready ourselves for. But I'll finish with this particular part on this particular topic, and that is receiving the promises of God. Yeah. Now we have the first fruits of many things now. But in the end, when the Lord Jesus comes, we will have the things that God has promised in their fullness. One promise the Lord Jesus gave was, he that, this is Matthew 24, 13, He that endured, endured unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now I'm sure you realize that we are not fully saved until we reach the end of the race. We're being saved right now. We're being preserved, but we're not. it's not in its fullness yet. When the Lord Jesus returns, that's when the race is over, so to speak. It's over. You've crossed the finish line. So the promise we receive here is salvation in its fullness. The same shall be saved. Now, no more enemies trying to take it from you. No more risk of not being worthy of it. We will be saved completely that day. So by having this readiness, I'm ready to receive that promise. The scriptures also speak of other promises of God, and other being this. This is 1 John 2, 25. This is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life is promised to those in Christ, and it's also one of those things that we don't have in its fullness yet. Yeah. We, do have the we do have the first fruits. We do have the taste. But when Christ comes, who, who, those who are ready will have eternal life, and they will have a fellowship with the Lord in a much greater sense than they did before. Mm -hmm. So much so that it's beyond our comprehension. And of course, we could look at other things like we'll see him as he is. We'll be like him, but we shall see him as he is. That's a promise that's to be fulfilled. Or being made rulers over many cities. That's something that you haven't experienced yet in its fullness. Or a crown of righteousness is reserved for me, you know. Or you think the marriage supper of the Lamb with the bride of Christ, the, the bride of Christ is going to be joined to the groom. I mean, these are things that are yet to happen that you know about, that, you're make, that you have made preparation for. But they are promises to those who are faithful. And there are promises to be fulfilled in a little while, in a short amount of time. You don't have to wait long for this. So I tell you to keep yourselves ready at all times so that you won't miss out on these things. In these cases, we keep ourselves ready through endurance, being faithful to what the Lord commands, looking for, watching for his appearing, living by faith, walking in the spirit, running that race set before us. I mean, there's all kinds of things like this in the scripture about how we keep ourselves ready. 
the fight will soon be over. It's not going to be much longer you have to fight. I mean, how, how absurd would it be to drop out now? Yeah. How absurd would it be for a soldier to flee the battle when the victory's right there in his grasp? Mm -hmm. About to take the city and he runs away. Amen. Or how foolish would it be for a runner to drop out of the race when the finish line's right there in view? Yeah. That's the time you want to run out? Usually they drop off the big game, but when they see the finish line, that's when the speed picks up. Amen. How insane would it be for a fighter to forfeit the fight when his opponent is down and ready for the count? All he has to do is wait for him to count to 10. He says, I give up. Well, this is, to me, this is what it would be like dropping out of the race now. You don't have much time left, and then you quit now. You're near the end. At least that's what our persuasion is. Victory is close for the saints of God, and I say keep up the work. As the song says, victory ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. To me, victory ahead, it means I can see it. Amen. Not that I'm persuaded eventually, in some few years, we're going to be the winners. No, I mean, I see the victory happening right now. It's nigh. It's close. That victory is in view. It's, it's, it's soon to be obtained. So founder on those things happening in a little while. Now then he ends. He says, he that, will, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. You see, we know here by the beginning that our time here is very short. And we have to keep that constant state of readiness. And the final part of this verse gives us all the more incentive to heed to those words because he's not going to tarry. The main passage says he's not going to tarry. When the time comes, there will be no delays. You know, like you go, you arrive up, you arrive for a, a flight on a plane or something. It's a, it's a, it's, it's set to uh, like take off at a certain time, and then it says flight delayed. Sorry, you're going to have to wait a few hours. You have some technicalities. No technicalities on the, on the coming of Christ. It's not going to be delayed. No activity on earth is going to like stall the Lord of Glory. Now there are a few virgins. They do word this a certain way that are, to me, they don't, they, they're kind of misleading. And I do want to say something about one thing here, because when people talk about the Lord, like the delay or long suffering or God waiting, they always present the idea that extra time is being granted. And that's wrong. <laughs> it's not right. Here's how the Living Bible put this. It says, his coming will not be delayed much longer. I don't like that. And I'll tell you why. Even though I will say, if you have the right, correct understanding of the passage, that could work. But because people don't have an understanding of this, that could be very misleading. Now, the word delay means to postpone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It means to linger, stall, reschedule, to put off for a later time mm -hmm. to impede progress. That's what that word means. And because that word means that, ordinarily, I don't think people are going to be thinking the passage in Tanarim, they read, it's not going to be delayed much longer. If it's not going to be delayed much longer, then that would mean that it is, in fact, been delayed. <laughs> He's just not going to keep delaying it. That's what it's saying, but that's, that's, too that's too misleading. The coming of Christ has never been postponed, and never will be. Amen. If it were so, that would be a direct contradiction to what Peter said in Peter 3, 9. It says that God's not slack. That's, right. that's what that means. Uh -huh. <laughs> it means he's not pushing the time off. Mm -hmm. He's on schedule. It's going according to plan. Mm -hmm. But if you read, it's not going to be delayed much longer. I guess it means he is slack, mm -hmm. if you look at it that way. Because that, I mean, that's what it says. It's what the word means. If people use it a different way, it's not very often you hear it used any other way other than they've delayed or they've canceled the time, moved the time some, in some way. And I mention this because people actually do believe this. They think that God delays his coming on behalf of sinners. And by that, I mean he's extending more time for sinners to repent. And this misconception is what has caused horrid songs like, Wait a little longer, please, Jesus, to be written. The chorus to this song reads, Wait a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many wandering out in sin. Just a little longer, please, Jesus. A few more days to get our loved ones in. Wait a little longer. Whatever happened to ever quickly come, Lord Jesus. Whatever happened to that? That's not the verse they were reading when they read that. Or wrote those words down. Songs like that forget. I mean, do people just forget that God's the one who's saving men? Because when I read that, maybe this isn't what they maybe this isn't what they meant. I admit, I'm kind of interpreting here. But when I read that, it sounds like they're saying, Lord, hold on, let give us more time to save more people for you. That's why that's what it comes across to me. God's saving men. Is God gonna just neglect to save those whom he's intended to save? Has God forgotten somebody? Are we telling him to wait because, oh, you forgot about so-and-so over here? Come on now. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Don't tell God to delay. Don't tell God to stall. Especially when the time is so close, you want to delay it? Seriously? Come on now. 
I can't sing a song like that with a smile on my face. If you, seen me, if you ever see a song like that, you'll see me scowling. Wait a little longer. No way. Absolutely not. Unacceptable. Yeah. Now, this also, people forget that the jut, that the day is appointed. Yeah, the right. day of Christ's appearing is appointed. Yeah. And to confirm this, the day of judgment is appointed. And this is in Acts 17, verse 31, which reads, Because he hath appointed a day. A day, not some day, a day. Yeah. It's already circled on the calendar. In which he will judge the world in righteousness by the, that man whom he hath ordained. That's appointed. That's right. It's already scheduled. Uh -huh. If the judgment day is appointed, then how in the world can the things, that the coming of Christ, be delayed? Paul said in 2 Timothy 4.1, it does say that. It says, he will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. That's when the judgment takes place. So if the judgment is set to happen, then there's no way that the coming of Christ could be moved. It's impossible. It's set to happen. You've got to be ready because God's not changing the date, so to speak. <laughs> when it says that God was long-suffering toward usward, he didn't mean he was giving us extra time to repent. It means that he's not cutting the time short. That's what he meant. He has a time appointed... The example that's been commonly used is no one in the ark. It says he's long suffering the days of Noah and say, Well, see, God was waiting for extra people to repent. No. The ark made a certain amount of time to build, and right. he wasn't going to come prior to the ark being built. That's, that's right. that, in that sense, he waited. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't say, All right, I'm going to destroy it now. Oh, wait, Noah. All right, I'm going to wait for Noah to build the ark, and then I'll come. That's completely different. He gave Noah enough time to get the work yeah. done. In that sense, he waited for him. And even then, that's an absurd view to have anyway. If he said he was waiting for more people to repent. The most biggest problem I think you have with that view is a custom-built ark. Think about it. If, hypothetically, all these people repented, oh, we want to be saved too, and all these thousands of people come into the ark, let us in, Noah. What's wrong with this picture? If God wants all these people saved, why did he build such a small boat for them? Eight people were made to fit in that ark with all those animals. So if these people all came, where would they go? It'd be like... A flood happening here, and I build a rowboat and say, me and, my, me and my wife getting in there with the kids saying, oh, we're waiting for more, more people to come. It, there's no room. A custom-built ark. It was made for, in fact, on top of that, God said, paraphrasing, all right, I'm, the world's wicked, build an ark. I'm killing everyone except for you and your family. I mean, there's no question that he only intended to save them. So let's not be foolish enough to think that God's going to just put things off for us because of slothfulness. Sometimes, men just have to just realize it's happening anytime. I don't have time anymore to wait. I have to do it now. So you see, this differs significantly from delaying the appointed time. He's not going to cut it short on our behalf. Now, while that particular version, you know, it says he's not going to delay much longer, that wasn't so good. Other versions, it do quite well in giving the correct thought. Like this common English Bible, it says the one who is coming will come and won't delay. See, it says it more precisely that way. Because what it's saying here is God won't stall or delay when the time comes. See, that's different. He won't, like, change his mind. He won't have second thoughts. When the time of the Lord, the time the Lord is appointed comes, the Lord's not going to stay put. It's t the waiting's done at the point, at the time, the appointed time, that's when the delay there, that's when he's saying there's not going to be delay at that point. Now, this other one, it's called the easy-to-read Bible, but it just says the one who is coming will come and will not be late. Yeah. Now, that I do like. Yeah. That, I think, gets the right idea. Because it, it assures us that the coming of Christ is going according to schedule. Because, you know, scoffers are going to rise in the last time. Like, where is the promise of his coming? Everything's gone on as it always was. Nothing changed. Nothing, not, there's only nothing indicating to us that the world is ending, you know, that there's no rise, but it says he's not late. He hasn't, he hasn't missed the due date. It's still set, and it's still set, and it's going to happen. So that's just a, a good word to show that there's no fear of this happening. There's no fear of this not happening. Like, we're going we're gonna to be disappointed. Oh, it just didn't happen after all. We've had this happen in the world. We've had our hearts set on something. It just didn't happen. Well, that's not what's coming for the people of God. It will happen at the time it's intended to happen. Amen. Now, the Message Bible, or what I like to call it, the Message Bible Commentary, that's what it should be called. Yeah. I do actually like what it says here. It gives the correct idea concerning the time being soon. It reads, it won't be long now. He's on the way. He'll show up 
any minute. That's, that's not bad. I feel that's the right attitude that should be presented here. Any minute. It's good to think. You see, you got to stop thinking in terms of days and years and weeks. you got to think in terms of minutes when it comes to the coming of the Lord. Minutes. Seconds. That should give you all the more alertness when it comes to the coming of the Lord. Because he's not, he's not changed. The clocks aren't getting changed. It's going right on schedule. And he's going to come whether you're ready, whether people are ready or not. He's going to come anyway. So with that being said, I'm going to be ready now because he's not, if I put it off, he's not going to. Perhaps that's what I want to get across is we can't afford to delay because God himself was not going to delay this on our behalf. Sometimes in a group setting, one person like running late, the rest of the group will delay the meeting or event until that person arrives. Well, when that appointed time comes, he's not going to extend the time then. Amen. When the time comes, he's going to come whether anyone's ready or not. And if you are ready, you're going to be glad. And if not, you'll miss out forever. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Remember these things are soon approaching and do not assume that you just don't assume you have a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Don't think like I'm going to make it home today. Don't think I'm going to, I'm looking forward to evening, you know, even though we are. But don't, don't assume you're going to make it that far. Because I don't, I'm, I don't think we are. I could just say it. I don't think we're going to last the whole day. I have no reason to. God said it would come soon, and He said the, it's little, while. And so when I think little, I don't think of an elephant. I think of a mouse, small, tiny, little while. And if those things are in your heart, then this word gives gladness. Yeah. And so I say before our station that today could be the day, brethren, and I hope it is. <laughs>